This week on Morning Mika, Donald Trump pledges allegiance to Russia, inviting Vladimir Putin to invade Europe, and MAGA Republicans cheer him on. Is this shocking new low from the ex-president a way to deflect from the age question? Rich people are given $7,000 subsidy. The danger from within is far greater, in my opinion, from the, than the danger on the outside of our country. That's danger, but this is serious danger. The fascists. I know all about the marbles. I can tell you every marble. They'll change the name. They're going to change the name of Pennsylvania. Strewn all over the garage for our under. And we can even be energy dominant. And yes, quickly says that. President Trump. Plus, Democrats paint a red district blue and show the party how to win 2024 from abortion health care to immigration to aid for Ukraine and Israel. Republicans are self-destructing for the Donald, banking yet another political loss thanks to their mega, MAGA maniac. Donald Trump lost in 2017, oh, 2018. 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, and last night. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm Mika Brzezinski here with Simone Sanders Townsend, Huma Abedin, and Jen Psaki. But let's start with why experience matters. Did you guys see Reba at the Super Bowl? So good, right? She was so Love good. We uh, love a ginger singing. Thing. Loved it. Did anyone, anyone question her ability to belt out the national anthem? Of course not. She's one of the most successful female recording artists in history. Multiple Grammys, hit singles, sold out stadiums, the Country Music Hall of Fame. In the words of the 68-year-old, quote, this ain't my first rodeo. Or another music icon, Shania Twain, who's marking the 25th anniversary of Come On Over, the best-selling album ever by a solo female artist. She's launching her third residency in Vegas and hitting our stage in Abu Dhabi next month for Forbes and Know Your Values 3050 Summit. Is she too old to be in the spotlight? What about... Sarah Gilbert, who led the development of the COVID-19 vaccine at Oxford. Too old to save our lives? I don't think so. Or Nancy Pelosi, who served as Speaker of the House twice making history and continues to stand on the front lines of democracy. They can do their jobs, whether they're 50, 60, 70, or yes, even well into 80. And you know what? Come a little closer, I'll tell you a secret. Joe Biden has a stutter. And you know what? When he's pissed off, sometimes that stutter gets worse. And yeah, he, he walks carefully. Call the cops, somebody call the cops, it's a crime. The Republicans and bullies on Fox News say he can't even finish a sentence. He's so freaking old, sometimes he seems I don't know, what's the word? Um, ah, gosh, I'm grasping, I'm so old, I, I'm grasping for it. Successful, wise, accomplished, and yes, this ain't his first rodeo. In fact, he may be the most accomplished president of the modern age. He signed the CHIPS Act, bringing semiconductors back to the U.S. He reunified NATO and beefed up the alliance. He bolstered troop presence in Poland, making the world safer for all of us. He's managing the war in the Middle East. And you, you know what? When the war broke out in October, Joe Biden flew to Israel and sat in on an Israeli war cabinet meeting. He also traveled to Kyiv ahead of the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. President Biden made his way from Poland, embarking on a 10-hour train ride through the night. The danger level was high. It was a grueling journey. I'd like you to name another president who has traveled to two hot war zones in less than a year. You can't. Can you imagine Donald Trump 
taking a 10-hour train to Kyiv to visit the guy he tried to shake down to get dirt on the Biden family? Yeah, no. Back to the guy who some say is just too old. He's just too old. Joe Biden signed three enormous bills, the COVID-19 relief package, the bipartisan infrastructure law, and the Inflation Reduction Act. He sent stimulus checks to millions of Americans, got Medicare to negotiate prescription drug prices. He's overseen a record stock market and continues to unite the world against Russian aggression. This presidency is aging well. Something that isn't aging well? One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bills. A former president, and we may as well just put this on fast forward because there's so much, but yeah, he just said that. He also suggested that you should inject bleach in your arms to ward off COVID, called Americans who died in war losers and suckers, wonders repeatedly why we can't use nuclear weapons, called Haiti and African nations whole countries, advocated for a Muslim ban, separated kids from their parents at the border, raped a woman in a department store, according to a New York judge, hung out with Jeffrey Epstein, and yes, constantly gives Vladimir Putin a pass to attack our allies. There's so much more this November. Voters need to ask themselves, do you want the older guy or do you want the old fraud, liar, grifter, cheat, a man who puts himself above everything else and is now facing 91 criminal charges, including hoarding classified documents so he can show them off to his friends, possibly dictators. Jen Psaki, does the Biden campaign have the right people in place to make this argument strongly? Well, first of all, they're both old. It's really the contrast that you just laid out that's the most important thing. I will say, Meek Avi, I obviously haven't worked for the president for almost two years, and I'm not in their strategy meetings. But I have worked with a number of people on the campaign. Some of them have worked for me as well. And here's how I would think about them to just ease people's concerns. These are like, I mean, my husband's from Kentucky, so I've been to the Derby. These are like the horses before they're let out of the gate. That's the kind of people who are doing press and communication and digital on this campaign. I want to just ease people's concerns here. So they're very tough. They're smart. They're strategic. A lot of these decisions do come from the top. And I do think everybody wants to and needs to see more of that fiery President Biden they saw in those democracy speeches they've seen in response to Trump on the NATO comments uh, over the last week. But the biggest problem I would say the campaign has right now is not about their communications or messaging staff or whatever it may be. It's that there's still a swath of the country, including Democrats and independents, who believe that Joe Biden is not going to be the nominee. He is going to be the nominee. Um, this is the contrast. And, and that is a challenge the campaign has they can't entirely solve. But it's, it's something people just need to start getting on board with and, and fighting the fight. Simone, abortion health care has gone undefeated at the ballot box since Roe was overturned. And now Democrats are challenging Republicans on their own turf over individual freedom, crime and immigration. Look at uh, Tom Swasey's victory on Long Island this week. Is this a winning message in November? Look, I think it is. I will say that I think that Tom Swazi's win, and particularly the Long Island suburb of Nassau County and a little bit of Queens, it is a suburb, but I think it is very specific to the suburbs of New York and not necessarily indicative of a Bucks County, right, or a Harper's Way, which is outside of Detroit. But I think the lessons that Democrats should take from Tom Swazi's win is that you lean into your message, be firm in what you believe and what you stand on, and do not let the lies go unchecked. And that is what Tom Swazi did. He leaned into his message about, um, he ran as many ads on abortion as he, as he did about immigration. He did not let the lies go unchecked. When his candidate, when his opponent uh, told lies about what his what Democrats quote quote believed in doing when it came to the border, that they believed in open borders, Tom Swazi hit back, and then he told the truth about the fact that look, there is a problem in this country when it comes to what's happening on the U.S. Mexico U.S. Mexico southern border, and. 
there was a bill that Democrats negotiated with Republicans, and Republicans refused to come to the table because Donald Trump told them, refused to stay at the table because Donald Trump told them so. And so those are the kinds of things that Democrats across the country need to do. And Tom Swazi also divest, invested in um, diversity. 20 percent of his district is Asian-American Pacific Islander. And so he specifically, he campaigned to that community. He, uh, Grace Meng, Congresswoman, was very influential in going out with the congressman and speaking directly to that community. And so Democrats don't have to scare voters. They have enough to run on it. And frankly, uh, our Republican friends in Congress are giving them a lot of fodder because they are just not doing their jobs, Mika. Huma, I'm curious if uh, Joe Biden stutters or misspeaks. It's on a loop on Fox News and other networks. What do you make of the age issue? I mean, you look at some of the leaders we talk about constantly on MSNBC, whether it's the leader of China or Russia or India, they're all in their seventh mm -hmm. decade, by the way. Mm -hmm. I think the difference, the big difference that we have uh, this year, um, I know both Jen and Simone have talked about this, and Mika, mm -hmm. too, we have nine months. Um, they have nine months to really show this country what uh, the, this administration's record is. And that the experience will, should speak for itself, but it doesn't. And I think that's a real opportunity. I loved that, Saki, when you guys, at the 2020 convention, that there was a little boy that went up and said, you know, I stutter and, and, mm -hmm. and this is my experience in life. And then this is what the president does too. And I wasn't reminded or I'd forgotten. And I pay attention, by the way, I watch your shows. I had forgotten that the president hurt his foot when he was president elect. And that that's, you know, one of the reasons why it's, you know, he has an issue uh, sometimes with that with that foot. I'd completely forgotten. And so I think being transparent is really important in this day and age. You can't be coy and sort of be a virgin walking into the space saying, I don't know. And let's get to the election day. You have to clarify and explain and push back. Uh, and I think they know that they need to do that. I like it also when he jokes about it. I think it works um, and totally own it. I agree with you, Huma. Uh, let's say on the topic of strategy for a moment and let's talk about meeting voters where they are. For much of the country, that means places like Fox News, which really had some trouble with the truth um, and is paying for it. Remember during the last presidential cycle when Pete Buttigieg would go on and absolutely dismantle the false narratives? Well, there's a classic parlor game of trying to find a little bit of daylight between running mates. And if people want to play that game, we could look into why a, an evangelical Christian like uh, Mike Pence wants to be on a ticket with a president caught with a porn star. Lately, it's President Biden himself who's taking down the bad faith arguments. Thank you, guys. Let's Will you take down. questions on inflation, then? Let's, thank you, Do you all. think inflation is a political liability? That's a great asset. More inflation. I don't need his recommendation. It's How totally bad out. is your memory, and can you continue as president? My memory is so bad, I can let you speak. <laughs> Jen Psaki, uh, my question to you is: Should uh -huh. they get, should they get some strong voices? I know Mitch Landrieu is out there, and should they get them on Fox News? Is it happening? Uh, yes, yes, they should. They should. Um, Peter Ducey, I mean, God bless. It really brings me back. Um, yeah. You know, Mika, uh, I, I think from personal experience, I will tell you, I did Fox News Sunday more than any other Sunday show, in part because I think it's so important, and this is not a very popular point of view among Democrats, I will say, to not cede ground. This is mm -hmm. also why I think it's important for Democrats, for the Biden campaign, for the Biden team to be on things like TikTok. I know it's controversial, and there are lots of things that need yeah. to be solved, but like we can't there can't be a seeding of ground here. You need to be on the platforms that are reaching people. So absolutely. Mitch Landrew is fiery. He's funny. He speaks authentically. He's a great candidate to be out on Fox News. And they have other people on the campaign who are surrogates, who are co-chairs who can do that. And I absolutely think they should and think it's important. Well, I need more than Mitch. Mitch is great, but we need many, many, many more. You're and right. we need strong voices mm. that, yeah, Strong voices that can clap back in real time. And if they're not getting on Fox News, Simone, like if they're asked, because, I mean, they call themselves fair and balanced, then they should have balance. And if they're talking about Joe Biden, they should have somebody on the show answering to all the criticism, criticism and sometimes lies that they're putting out there. 
Yeah. And so my question to you is, do, you, do we need to get more aggressive about the Fox factor? And by the way, if they won't have surrogates on or people who can speak about the other side of the story, then they shouldn't call on them in press conferences. Are they going to be a news organization or are they just going to be an arm of the Trump campaign? Well, look, I think these are very valid questions, Mika. And if, in my experience, if you offer up folks to Fox News, they will, in fact, take them. So mm -hmm. it, I, I don't think this is then a... Who? Um, w exactly. Well, I think, look, I think, yes, Mitch Landrew, I think the cabinet secretaries need to go out and do a round, for sure. I think that there are a number of uh, surrogates and spokespeople, just Democratic strategists, that need to pitch themselves to go on Fox News. This is where a strong surrogate operation matters. And it's more than just the White House, right? I, I always like to say that the White House could be doing their part and doing everything they're supposed to do, and the campaign could be on strong footing. But if the apparatus that is the Democratic Party apparatus, the DNC, the strategists, the other party committees, if they are not supporting that strategy, leaning in, um, proactively doing things, it, it's, it's not going to make a difference. Uh, so it can't just be on the White House, and it can't just be on the campaign. They have to lead from the front, and I think that they are doing that. But other folks going to have to jump on board. Board, Mika. And yeah. people can't be... I used to do Fox News a lot all the time. I am not... Mm. Uh, I don't think I'm the profile <laughs> for the Fox News <laughs> viewer. But I went, because you have to go to where the people are. But folks also have to be willing to, to, to come on regularly during the daytime and on, on our network and others. Uh, they need to pick up the phone and call reporters. They We got to just go back and do some nitty-gritty legwork. And it remain. We'll see. Again, we got a couple months, so we'll see how um, this all ends up shaking out. So, Huma, this is what um, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden recently told me about the issue of her husband's age. So, to those who say I can't vote for Joe Biden, he's too old. What do you say? I say his age is an asset. Aha! Uh -huh. He's wise. Yes, he's wise. He has wisdom. He has experience. He knows every leader on the world stage. He's lived history. He knows history. Mm -hmm. He's thoughtful in his decisions. He is the right man or the right person for the job at this moment in history. So, Huma, can it be, can it be a positive factor? Well, Mika, as I, I think you all know, I'm on my way to Munich for, to attend the security conference. And the conversations that you know came out after uh, the Davos meeting a few weeks ago, the conversations people are having about what is going to happen in our country, is he, you know, is, to Jen's, you know, echoing again Jen's point, is he going to be our nominee? Could it be Trump? They're making these huge decisions about their own, um, you know, their own country's futures based on what they think is going to happen in our country, and in part because... America, even though we are not the foremost sort of, you know, have the foremost supremacy today as we had maybe a few decades ago, we are still seen as a leading partner on any global stage. And these are conversations where we're talking about life and death and these crises and these conflicts, not just in Ukraine and the Middle East, but really throughout the world. But those two are for, uh, at the forefront of, of people's minds. And so many of these relationships are based on trust. They're based on having, um, you know, knowing uh, knowing these leaders for decades, which President Biden does do, people in his administration does do. And, you know, the last thing I want to say, because you mentioned, you know, he reunified uh, NATO. In 2020, it was Joe Biden that these, that are, that Democrats selected in our country selected. And we've succeeded at the ballot box since then, every year, as you started at the top of your show. And we have to remind people that, that experience and that wisdom is something that voters do respond to when they know um, what this leader has done for them.